Hey friends, it is Wednesday and that means it's Ask a Flower Farmer. It's your friend Lisa Mason Ziegler. Thank you so much for dropping in here and got a lot of fun stuff that we can talk about today. Look what's behind me. Y'all might, if, you've, if you're one of the gazillion orders that we received, thank you so very, very much. They might be packing your order. So I'm kind of standing right here in the thick of it with Suzanne and Rhonda. We're down one person this week. Um, so we yanked Bobo from the farm. Bobo's here, Susie's here, Suzanne's here, Rhonda's here, and I'm here, and Melanie's here. So lots of fun stuff going on, and we just had lunch, so we're all pretty happy right now. And so if this is your first time here on Ask a Flower Farmer, this is how it works. If you look at the bottom of your screen, there's a little bubble with a question mark, and that's where you post your questions. That way I don't potentially miss them. This might not have been a very good choice, y'all. This is kind of noisy over here. Um, so that way I don't have to scroll through all your names and perhaps miss it. So if you've got questions about cool flowers, seed starting, flower farming, growing cut flowers, even farm dogs, I'll do my best to try to answer that for you. So I don't know if you guys... Um, saw my post. I did a reel this morning where I just walked through the garden. I am going to have to move y'all. No question about that, right? My sister's just trying to be noisy, I think. You know how baby sisters are. All right, so I'm moving up here. We'll be, a, we'll, we'll peek. And look, there she is again. <laughs> so I'm going to put you right here and we'll be away from the paper ripping, taping station. Um, so I don't know if you saw my reel. I just did a walkabout in cool flower in my cool flower garden yesterday. Actually, just one of them. I have three actual separate areas on the farm that have cool flowers growing, and I just even I just want everybody to know that even after 25 years of growing cool season hardy annuals, I'm still worried they're going to die every year. That never goes away, y'all. I mean, I am sure whether it's going to be too wet or we have an ice storm or we have heavy snow or whatever we have, I'm always questioning, is it really going to, are they going to survive? And so I was just really thrilled to share some of the images. I didn't show any of the direct seeded stuff um, and some of the, another garden that we have in the back that I didn't get to take pictures of. Um, so... I just want everybody to realize that being afraid and scared, I'm still doing it, friends. Um, so let me, oh, I have to share a top secret secret. That's not going to be a secret after I tell you, right? Um, word is that Cool Flowers, our Cool Flower book shipment will be due in here by the end of the week. So if you're not on the wait list, you need to get on it. Those are the people that will be notified the minute they go in stock. I'll be signing books all weekend, and I would just absolutely love to sign a book for you. Um, so they're, they're in route. They're on a truck coming to us. Um, so get on that wait list. And you get on the wait list on the product page, either on the inside the app or on our website. Just go and it'll say get notified or get on the wait list. Do that, and that just means you'll get an email the minute the stock is put in the store that you can purchase it um, immediately. All right, so now that there's 17 questions, I guess I better get hopping to it, right? All right. Union Mills flowers. How do you deal with seeds that fluctuate in germination like straw flowers? One end of the tray looks good and the other end had no germination. Um, thought same seed package. Well, obviously there is something different from one end to the other, whether it's the heat mats got hot spots or the water's not getting to those. I mean, there's some, I mean, it's science, right? It is pure science. Um, something is not happening. And I've, I've experienced that myself. It happens to us sometimes. I got some trays several years ago, some cafeteria trays that the middle, they weren't as heavy duty as my others. So the middle of the tray bowed up a little bit, which meant the water didn't run there. It was a real, I got rid of them. I trashed them in fact, because it's a real pain in the neck when you're watering 200 trays to have to worry about that. So something is different. You just have to figure out what it is. If it's on a heat mat and you got spotty germination, I can almost promise you it's uneven distributed heat source is what that would be. 
And heat mats do die, y'all, especially if you use them all the time, um, like we flower farmers do. Heat mats are kind of made for the gardener, you know? And so if you're running them 24 seven, which is the way you run them and you seed start all year like we do, they do die. They, I mean, you have to replace them. They aren't a forever product just by the nature of what they're made out of. So that's what I would think about. All right, I am considering using burlap for seed starting blocks. My question is, do you throw it away when the tray is germinated? Do you clean it or sterilize the burlap? For use, thanks for all you do. You're welcome. So, no, it is reusable forever. Um, and, you know, we don't sterilize anything. I mean, we wash our trays, obviously, with dishwashing liquid and like we're washing glasses. Um, but we don't use sterile soil. We don't, um, we, that's, you know, organic is the opposite of sterile, right? So, um, you know, you just lay it on top. I pull it back to water and then I, um, lay it back down and if it gets messed up or stiff or you know that burlap is another one of those things it's not a it's not like a soil blocker in the trays that go on forever just because of the nature of how they're made um, but burlap heat mats what else am I thinking about grow light bulbs you know those are things that have a life so um, but yeah we definitely I use it for a season at very least all right do I cut the top of my snapdragons that died with the last freeze. I got new growth at the bottom. I wouldn't touch anything. Um, I told somebody that on social media today. I mean, if you are pretty sure something's dead and you have, you've got to be sure you have flowers and you don't have enough space, that's something I may consider pulling out or cutting on. But everything else, I would, unless it's mushy, which is a sign of death, um, unless you have green growth coming up, but that ved that dead vegetation is insulation to the rest of your plant. So I generally don't do anything in the winter. So that's just my take. How do I deal with deer pressure? Um, so deer pressure, of course, is always heaviest during the winter because they don't have as much to choose from. Um, the number one thing is a, de a true deer fence installed by either a very knowledgeable person on deer fencing installation or professional. Um, poor deer fencing traps deer on your property as well as can cause them injury. Um, so I would definitely Google that. There's one company um, that I was so very impressed with 25 years ago, B-E-N-N-E-R-S, um, fence, I think it is, but they specialize in deer fencing, and go in there and look at some of their tutorials, um, and deer fencing is the only way to be 100% fail-proof, um, installed properly, and then the next thing is spraying. We sprayed for years, because I can't have deer fencing in the middle of the city. Um, you have to read your instructions. If it says spray every 30 days, or if it says spray every seven days, at the end of those daytime numbers is when the inner um, ingredient, the sticker that sticks the product to the leaves expires. It goes away and it's like they're no more. So if I use the expensive deer spray, several different brands, Liquid Fence, um, my mind is gone, imustgarden.com, their deer spray, Liquid Fence, I forget the third one. Um, but we know that using different brands with different ingredients and using a different one once a month really keeps the deer on their toes and it works. But put it on your calendar like a mortgage payment. Um, if you wait till 35 days, it's gone. They'll come in. I mean, they're red. They're, they're very smart animals. Um, and it's all about their nose. So you've got to follow the instructions. But it works great. We did it. All right. If they, is there an order processing delay? I ordered sunflower seeds on the first and it still says processing. Oh, yeah. So, I mean, we literally have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of orders and we're filling orders around the clock. So you all, you'll get them. Um, it's just not our normal same day shipping. Um, I mean, we had that huge, um, inventory sale at the end of the year last year and so yeah it's coming we're doing our best we're coming along 
What is good to start planting now for a beginner flower farmer with lots of space? Nothing really. Um, I mean, it's not that, t it depends on where you are. But if you want to try to plant some very early spring, cool season hardy annuals, the problem is if you didn't prepare your site last fall, it is typically too wet, frozen, or covered in snow to prepare soil. It's real easy to walk out and plant into a prepared bed. Um, but I would say very early spring, um, just, I mean, not very early spring, spring planting would be where you probably need to start. And um, yeah, it's a little too late, but cool flowers would be what you would normally be planting and starting at this time to plant six to eight weeks before your last frost date. There's a great resource um, on our website. Go to thegardenersworkshop.com, go to resources, go to my blog. There's a cool flower category. The very top post is called the Cool Season Flower Chronicles. There are a ton of resources available to you right there. So go and check that out. How finely must I sift soil blocking material? So we use, can somebody bring me a sieve, please, a sifter? So this is what we, um, here it comes. So this is, what is that, a quarter inch, Rhonda? Yeah. This is a quarter inch. This fits perfectly on a five gallon bucket. These bubblegums have been flying out of here. Um, so a quarter inch is the size that you want to sift with. If you go smaller than that, it's like the biggest pain in your neck to sift. And I want to say, glad you asked this question. I've seen people, especially over in my student um, closed groups, people talking about what a pain in the neck it is to sift. I'm telling you, friends, it is worth, I think this is 20 bucks. It'll change your life. To be able to just pop this on a five-gallon bucket, do it, do it, do it, spend a half a day sifting all your ingredients, storing it in an airtight, not airtight, but a sea. We use galvanized trash cans. Rubber trash cans are fine. Do it all in one day, enough for all your seed starting for the next few months, and then you don't have to do it again. And that's like the liberation of ever. But quarter inch is... The size that we use because if you get it finer than that it is so much harder but quarter inch is all that's necessary chris got my hands on a high tunnel i know steve and gretel's course is closed but do you know of where i can learn more about the ins and outs of tunnels until their course opens again can i just pay for their course and take it now funny chris um no comment <laughs> um and the course is blooming amazing. I mean, Steve and Gretel are like the queen and king of um, high tunnel growing. They have 18 tunnels. Last I talked to them, every time I talk to them, they're adding another one. Um, anyway, they have a lot of great resources on their website. You ought to comment on one of their posts um, to ask them. I mean, they've done so many conferences. I'm sure you could chase something down. Of course, the ASCFG, all their conferences there are in there, um, but I would highly recommend um, just limping along until you can take their class, but reach out to them on a post and say, hey, I want to take your course. What have you got that can get me until it opens for enrollment again, you know, and see if you can't get somebody, um, get one of them to respond to you. What is the latest, should I plant straw flowers, stick, very early spring flowers? I have a few seeds and I ran out of same climate as you. So um, straw flowers are cool season hardy annual. We begin starting them. Um, Bobo just started them last week. Um, and we will plant, you know, we, they're our very first planting mid-February or so, February to 1st of March. But then we like to start them about every four to six weeks for two or three more times. Straw flowers, even though they are a cool season hardy annual, do very well being started later in the season and planted. They are not as abundant or as tall as the ones that have the first planting, but they're definitely worth growing. They'll be 30 inches instead of 48 inches tall. I mean, they're still very viable. So we keep planting them over and over for two or three times. Tips for field growing stock. I have my succession planting times, but hoping to get tall stems 
with no tunnel. Well, the number, and we just started our, she started um, straw flowers in stock on Monday. Bobo, yes. can you hear me? Um, the stock is starting to pop. I saw it this morning when I watered. Um, forgot to tell her that. Um, so the thing with stock is plant them so blooming close together, you're not even going to believe it. We put eight rows across a 30-inch bed, and that helps them to stretch up. Um, and we really like the Cheerful series, which has only got white and yellow, um, both of which I think we have in stock, I'm not sure, um, are super tall. And I'm exp we're growing so many stocks this year, and it's all field grown, but getting them tight together and don't, I mean, we plant the first ones mid-February. You could succession a couple times after that, but as soon as it gets hot, here comes Bobo I with like a comment. Cheerful yellow. We only started cheerful yellow. Um, so stock does not like heat. So once it heats up, you don't I mean so don't even waste your time starting multiple successions if you're pretty sure because they'll just be super short. Growing them cold is what they really, really want. So hope that helps. Space close. So eight rows in a 30 inch bed, and then we do six inches apart in the row. Um, Suzanne. It sounds like my dog is destroying something. Please. Um, yeah, this is what Tucker does when I get otherwise occupied with something. He's standing here at the gate like uh, an innocent. Oh, he's like, are you? Mm, okay. <laughs> Tips for growing eucalyptus from seed. Well, um, so first off, we will be restocking the silver, dro silver dollar. We just got the seed. It'll probably take three weeks. I mean, you think we have a lot of orders to do? We have so many seeds to get packaged. I mean, we're on that roll. So we start eucalyptus in the small soil block. It takes 12 weeks to grow it. We typically have germination in 7 to 10 days using the heat mat. Then, you know, once 50% pop, they go over to the grow light. Then when they're about three weeks old, about that tall, I bump them up to the two-inch blocker. Um, but they're just slow. And the problem with slow-growing seeds, this is why people buy plugs of Lysianthus, Dusty Miller's slow, Rude Beckia's are slow growers. There's just a lot more ways you can kill a seedling when you have it so much longer. When they're quick... It's, you know, you water them and go on about your business, and before you can kill them, they're ready to go out to the garden, right? I mean, literally, that's true. Because overwatering is the number one problem that people have. They just can't master that sometimes. Um, and it's inconsistent watering, basically. Um, so eucalyptus on heat, um, soil blocking does great, and then bump them up to the two inch. Almost hit the wrong button, y'all. Sorry. Do you do any winter sowing? I planted a few with milk jugs, but I just thought there was a better, more efficient way. So, Kansas girl, you nailed it. I hear about people winter sowing all the time, and I'm sure it works. No, I have never done it. But we plant where they're going in the garden. You know what I mean? It's just less steps. All that stuff, um, typically, we plant either in the fall or in very early spring, and we plant it where it's going to grow. So my book, Cool Flowers, is all about those cool season hardy annuals um, and can help guide you on that. I thought the same thing as you. There's got to be less steps. Lisa, could you share your trick for sweet peat germination, your new process? Thanks. So Farmer Bailey has converted me. Um, so instead of sweet, so we plant sweet peas in the two-inch block, the soil block. Um, and we put one seed per block. We do not soak them. And I set the tray outside on the carport. Um, so it's like, I mean, 55 degrees is what he says you're looking for. But obviously nobody has like a constant 55 degrees, right? So you just want cool to cold weather. And I'm telling you, we've done it two years in a row now. And we get like, it's slower. And we water. I mean, we water the blocks. But over after about 14 days, we have like 100% germination. So it's all about that cool growing. So, yeah. Let's see. Can I sow cool flowers in a cold greenhouse or do they need a heat mat? Well, so if you're talking about sowing them in the soil, like direct seeded or in beds, I mean, people use heat mats, I mean, or heat tables, even in greenhouses, 
most seeds, um, because I just talked about cool about sweet peas that don't necessarily need that, um, most seeds need some warmth to germinate, to break that dormancy and to get their business going, right? Um, so I'm not sure about that, but if it's like cool flowers when we sow those direct seeded stuff like Bells of Ireland that I was showing off in my reel that I did today that are beautiful. Um, you know, we are direct sowing them in the fall when the days are warm and the nights are cool. So um, I don't know how to answer that because I'm not sure what you're talking about doing which way, but they do need some warmth. Hey, boss. Well, hello. Do you uncover your lisianthus right after germination and remove from the heat as heat mat as some directions on the seed pack suggest? Well, Little West, here is the honest truth. We purchase plugs of lisianthus 99% of the time. I, Bobo doesn't know it, but I just took home lisianthus seeds, which we are now beginning to offer because um, we're starting them. And we know that there are some people that either can't purchase plugs, they just don't need that many. You know, even if you buy from Farmer Bailey, who sells smaller, I mean, you still got to buy 300 or what is it, 375 is the minimum, I think, with three trays. Um, so we are selling it. So I'll be able to answer that much better about four months from now. Um, but I used to start Lizzie from seed, and Lizzianthus is very, seed germination is very focused on air temperature. So you have to be able to control the temperature in the room. So no more comment than that. Do you bring the sweet peas in at night? Nope. I mean, if it's going down... I have to go look at my dog. Oh, my doggy. So now he's underneath Suzanne's desk, and when I just walked in there, all I could see was this much of his nose and his face. Hopefully he's not eating her purse or something. Anyway. Um, so the only time I would bring my sweet peas in that are sitting out for germination on the protected carport, meaning they're covered with a roof, is if it was going down. I mean, I heard Farmer Bailey say on a live one day that his have taken down to 22 degrees, but I wouldn't torture them that way. If it's going below freezing, I'd bring them in for the night. I am the worst caretaker of seedling, y'all. Which seeds need soaking or chilled or special treatment? Um... Nobody really needs, there are some that benefit from it. All the cool flowers that I recommend, none of them require stratification and all these different things that a lot of people, that there's so many other varieties of particular flower seeds that need that kind of treatment. Um, but we store all of our cool flower seeds in the freezer for at least a couple of weeks before we're going to sow them. Just think about it. Just the temperature change of bringing them out stored properly. There's a great blog about that by Rhonda. Store seeds longer on our website, also on my blog. Um, just helps them to realize it's time to germinate. And then you plant them out in the garden and give them water and the light they require and they germinate. So. We don't really do a lot of real special treatment, and then I do soak um, Bells of Ireland at least for a couple hours before I plant them because they're direct sown and their shell is super duper hard, and it works like a gem. All right, Popular Creek Flower Farm. I'm in zone 7B. I didn't plant any anemones or ranunculus this fall because I was too afraid that it would get too cold. When should I get them in the ground? Our last frost date is April 15th. I cannot help you on that because I do not grow either one of them, and I haven't really. I grew both of them once about 10 years ago, um, so I have no help for you there. Could you, could you remind me where you're located and what zone? Sure, so I'm in southeastern Virginia, and I literally live right on the line of 8B, 8A and 7B. Um, so it just depends on literally which way the wind is blowing to what kind of weather conditions we have here. We have free local pickup. <laughs> and, and Rhonda wants everybody to know that we have free local pickup. If you live in the Hampton Roads area, that's one of our shipping um, options. And a lot of people don't know about that. You just have to be able to drive to our warehouse to pick it up at, after you've been notified. Um, but yeah. You can sneak it on the plane. <laughs> She's full of a lot of help today. Do you use the three-quarter inch blocker for seedlings? Julie, I use the three-quarter inch blocker, which is this 
You can't even see it because they're so cute. We wrap all of our blockers for shipping. I use the three quarter inch blocker 98% of the time. Um, when I don't use it is when the seed is too big for that block. For instance, sweet peas, squash, zucchini. Um, and then we do use, um, we start our tomatoes, our peppers, eucalyptus, all of those in the small blocker and then bump them up. But those are really the only ones I do that with. And why would you not start those seeds in the big block to start off that way? Because to keep that large block evenly moist and warm to get the seed germinate is part of the problem that we all have with all the other methods. That's why you're highly successful with a high rate of germination with that small block. So yes, I use it for I use it for marigolds, zinnias. I mean, we start, there are tons. If you scroll back on my feed, back to like early summer, you'll just see tons of images of trays and trays with 240 zinnia plants that are this tall and they're all in three quarter inch blocks. They do great. It's the timing that's the problem. In a previous seed starting Saturday, you mentioned starting another batch of Rudbeckia later seeds. If you could push Rudbeckia to bloom later, later, what were the results? That was an old video. So we planted um, last year, because we're growing all the Rudbeckias now, I mean, y'all, oh my gosh, they're all so beautiful. Cherokee Sunset and Sahara, especially when they're fall planted, they're like booming tall. Everybody, I stayed away from them because everybody said they could be short. Well, that's because they're planting them at the wrong time, right? Um, so last year, I'm sorry, last season, we planted them the fall before last season and got rocking great, tall, amazing plants. Then we planted them again in very early spring. I remember Denver Daisy and Sahara um, and a couple of others. Um, and they were not as tall. But just like I mentioned about the straw flowers, they were definitely tall enough and they were just starting to bloom as the fall planted ones were kind of signing off. Um, it still wasn't later. I did not plant them. What I want to try to do is to plant them like not in very early spring, which is like mid-February for me. I want to plant them in April and see when they bloom. Because yes, you're right. I mean, it would be amazing to have Sahara um, and Cherokee sunset in September, but I haven't spent a lot of time figuring out how to exactly do that. So that might be a Dave Dowling brain pick. I'll have to talk to him about when he thinks we should do it. Here's a book that needs to be signed. Happy birthday, mom. Aw, sorry y'all. I have to sign a book. Um, when Cool Flowers gets here, that will be my full-time job. So this is for Donna's mom. You hear my dog? He's suspiciously standing near my desk. Yeah. Thank you. All right, thank you. Here's the pen. Um, so that's all I can tell you about Rudbeckia. And you know, as we are just keeping moving further and further away from production growing, I'm able to do more trialing. Um, and I'm sure that you all have heard that I have a new book in the oven. First half has been turned in. Still have another half to, to, to nail out. But we are super excited for this coming season because it is really um, going to be about some of this kind of stuff. So I hope, I'm glad you brought that up. I'll try to keep that in the hopper. How do you price your pro cut sunflower bunches? Um, that's a really loaded question. I don't share wholesale pricing um, publicly. That is certainly something we talk about in our closed student classes. Um, but to buy a, it depends on what size they are, you know, what season it is. And um, so, you know, that is something that you need to do some research on or I mean, one way to do research on that is to visit your local farmer's market to see what other farmers are selling. Good quality, long-lasting, pollen-list um, sunflowers. So it just depends. Are you talking retail, wholesale? Um, so it's, it can be very, very varying. We sold nice pro cuts that are like four to five inches um, at our members only market for two bucks a stem, but that's been several years. So I'm sure that price would be higher now. 
All right, I'm taking one last question, and then we're getting off here. It's 1 o'clock. What type of footwear do you favor when working among your beds? Shoes, boots with safety toes. That's a great question. I used to wear steel-toed boots, um, especially back in the days when I was doing a lot of walk-behind tilling, um, you know, with my walk-behind tiller, um, just because that was, you know, I was right behind the tilling machine. But once I started tractoring, um, I stopped wearing steel toed they're just heavier hotter boots um but i use i you either wear duberry boots um which are leather irish boots that love them to love them they're kind of a horse person boot so they're made for muck right um and they last me a couple three years they're pricey but they're so worth it they have gore-tex inside um and then i also wear I wished I was just thinking. I wished I usually I have them on. Um, I wear a brand of hard clog called Jollies, J O L L Y. Hard time finding them. It's a German um, clog. Fix my plantar fasciitis, um, and they just I love them. They have replaceable insides, um, and um, anyway, so those are my favorite ones. So I thank you guys so much for joining us here. So once again, I want to say word is that Cool Flower, our palette, will be here by the end of the week. If you're on the wait list, keep your eye out for your notifications saying they've been put back in stock. We sold out in hours back in November. Um, I don't think that'll happen this time, but you never, ever know. So I'll be spending the next week signing books, I reckon. Um, and if you want to be notified, just go to the book page and sign up to get on one of the lists. That just means you're going to get an email that says, hey, the books are in. Get yours. Because I would love to sign one for you. And um, I think that's all I have to say. Kind of crazy here. It's hard to even focus. Oh, and be sure you join me. I don't know if you don't have my phone app yet. You can search your phone app store, Gardener's Workshop Live Shop. I do a live show on Fridays. Um, it's all about kind of talking about and showing what we're doing on the farm um, and or demonstrating it or showing and talking about it. And um, then you can buy it. So think QVC for gardening with me. That's what it's all about. And we started that in season last year so I can show the actual live harvest. And that's, you know, as soon as we start getting flowers, that's totally and completely fun. Um, so... Friends, if you're waiting on an order for us, please know that we are working diligently as fast as the post office will come and get them. We're getting them out of here. Um, so you all are so welcome. So the live show is Fridays at 12 noon Eastern time. Get the phone app, grab your lunch, and spend an hour with us. Um, and this week, I don't know what, oh, I think I'm soul blocking this week. We're talking all about cool flowers is what we're talking about. Um, so join me then. Ciao, friends.